the very romantic story of a mogul who's on all the store and restaurant accounts cut off all the garages and his mistress he's rich he's powerful he adores me and the biggest deal they ever put together i want you to say you love me alan king and ally mcgraw star in just tell me what you want saturday he's up he's down he's bond i think he got the point hbo's james bond festival continues as 007 gets into more hot water sean connery stars in thunderball Sunday, a successful songwriter with friends and a woman who loves him discovers that he doesn't have everything. Whatever I was thinking wasn't anything special and suddenly there she was and I reacted. He'll do anything to fulfill his dream. Tonight, I spend with you. Dudley Moore, Julie Andrews and Bo Derrick as the perfect 10 on HBO this weekend. in Hollywood, I have news for you. Now, I know I should be embarrassed because it's just a cheap thrill and an easy eyebrow razor, but it's also fun television. So we'll go ahead and unveil the 1985 edition of the Celebrity Buns Calendar. It comes from head bun watcher Christy Jenkins. This calendar has 12 of them, or I suppose 24 of them, with a real mixed bag of celebrities. Figure skating champion and gold medalist Scott Hamilton presents what looks like a victory backside, while Alan Thicke shares the honors for January with a hockey puck. That's Alan on the left. Brian Mitchell of Trapper John M.D. fame gives what I guess the good doctor would call a flank shot. And Richard Dean Anderson of General Hospital shows some of the form that have made him a soap opera star. But the daring yet tasteful award goes to Greg Benson. He starred as the Sheik in Bo Derek's Bolero. And on second thought, daring anyway. A little Saturday morning survey shows us the boy beast team of Tim Topper and this orangutan are the stars of a kid's show titled Going Bananas. Now her name on the show is Roxana Banana. She's the one getting all the attention, especially if you're a female and if you're on the set, because the she is a he. And reports are he's been making it very embarrassingly obvious. Broadway Bound, a new edition of Neil Simon's The Odd Couple opens this month in Dallas and begins a six-month road tour on its way to New York City. What could possibly be new enough? Well, how about a radically different version of The Odd Couple, this time out starring Rita Moreno and Sally Struthers. I wonder who plays Walter Matthau. And more headed for Broadway? Opening this month in London, it's Blockheads, a new musical which covers 40 years of life and laughter with the great Stan Laurel and Oliver Hardy. Named for a 1938 film hit which starred the boys, it hopes to reach New York sometime in the spring. And let me share a personal bit of memorabilia with you. This is a letter Stan Laurel sent me when I was back in high school, thanking me for my fan letter, giving me his home telephone number, enclosing the pre-printed autograph picture, which he then personalized, and inviting this young fan to come visit him at home. Boy, do we sometimes have our priorities wrong when we're young. For the rest of my life, I'll regret that I never followed it up. I lost the chance to meet one of the few genuine legends in the world of motion pictures. Do you have a question about the stars or the stories? We do our best to answer the most interesting ones right here on the air. So all you have to do is write. The address is simple. Just drop a note off to me, Bill Harris, care of Showtime, right here at 10 900 Wilshire Boulevard, Los Angeles Zip 90024. I promise we'll do our very best to get you an answer. And finally, from our Where Are They Now file, Darby Hinton will soon be seen starring in a big screen romp titled Malibu Express. But for six years, he co-starred in a major television series. The year was 1964, and Darby went on the air as Israel Boone, the young son of Fess Parker as Daniel Boone. The story? Well, Darby's mother had dropped him off at the studio for a casting call. They were looking for a young boy to play one of the children in The Sound of Music. Now, if you don't remember a young boy in the film family, that's because the role was eventually canceled. Young Darby, though, made a big mistake. He stood in the wrong line, and he accidentally beat out 300 young boys for the wrong part. The young kid got a series for six years, only in Hollywood. Bill Harris in Hollywood. We'll talk again. Showtime presents a rare showing of the Academy Award-winning short, An Occurrence at Owl Creek Bridge. Telecast as it aired 20 years ago on the Twilight Zone television series, this special presentation will include Rod Serling's original introduction. 
Next stop, four bizarre tales from another dimension with Twilight Zone, the movie. It all starts at 7.30, 6.30 Central on Showtime. Why not spend a quiet evening at home in front of the TV? Showtime makes your screen explode with the best in movie excitement, action, and romance in October with paid cable exclusives like Staying Alive. Guys like you aren't relationships. You're exercise. And exercise and daring takes Gene Hackman and his men back to Vietnam. Pick up blaster after we've snatched the prisoners. Uncommon Valor, a national pay cable exclusive. The agent to beat them all is back. My name is Bond, James Bond. Sean Connery is 007. In a lawless future, tyrants rule. There's always a way to fight back. Warlords of the 21st century. <laughs> Charles Bronson's fighting back. Do you believe in Jesus? Yes, sir. Well, you're going to meet him. Death Wish 2. Gandhi's Ben Kingsley and Jeremy Irons star in a moving story of betrayal. We're lovers. It's great movie excitement all October long on Showtime. Full of sizzling stars, hot movies, and fun-filled special features coming soon on the Movie Channel. Count me in. In July, the Movie Channel goes to the heart of America with films that capture the American spirit, like Racing with the Moon, a national pay cable exclusive starring Sean Penn and Elizabeth McGovern. I don't think we're going to get away with this. On the 4th of July, you'll have a grand old time with a Heart of America marathon, a full day of films that salute the USA and its heroes. I'm a Yankee Doodle Dad. Hop aboard for a wild week of cross-country capers. We're in a of good times and fast living. And explore the fast lane lives of rock stars, past and present, from Elvis to Prince. And you'll go crazy over July's hot movies, too. Enough talk. There's plenty of action with the mighty Conan the Destroyer, plus out-of-this-world adventure with the last starfighter. And suspense when two fast-talking schemers turn up the heat in The Pope of Greenwich Village. Then in August, true blue American teens take on an invading army in Red Dawn. Mama, be real proud. August is also the time to kick up your heels. Dance through the decades with toe tapping films like Footloose, a national pay cable exclusive. A spirited celebration of great movies coming soon on the Movie Channel. I love movies. Just crash out and put on the tube. I get very involved. Deeply. Right with the picture. Right with the star. I like drama best. Happiness, boom. Sadness, boom. How many movies does Cinemax have? Hundreds. Thousands and thousands. Billions and... Uh, pardon me, could I interrupt? Did I mention that... They don't just have movies. They have the really great movies. Cinemax. If you like movies. And could I say another thing? Simply the best summer ever for movies on HBO. Harrison Ford, Sean Connery, the super epic adventure, Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade. Ed Harris, Mary Elizabeth Mastrantonio, 
from the director of Alien, the surging sci-fi action smash, The Abyss. Jack Nicholson, Michael Keaton, Kim Basinger, Billy Dee Williams, one of this year's Oscar winners, Batman. Coming up next, Clint Eastwood, Bernadette Peters, a bounty hunter, a baby, and a tricky pink Cadillac. Simply the best movies on HBO. Next time out on the HBO Comedy Hour, Richard Lewis is doomed. Safe sex, what do you do? Look, what do you say to somebody without sounding like a jerk? Look, I don't want to be obnoxious or anything, but do you have anything at all that rhymes with warpies? I'm just curious. Richard Lewis, I'm doomed on the HBO Comedy Hour, premieres Saturday, July 7th. I tried phone sex, and then I got an ear infection. That was a nightmare. This is Showtime. Total entertainment anytime you tune in. 24 hours a day. Every day. Bill Harris back in Hollywood and back with movies. I have this month's brand new edition of our Hollywood Top Ten. It's our No Holds Barred review and preview of the top 10 grossing films in the United States. Remember one more time that we didn't pick these films. You, the audience, selected them as the very tops. Right now, let's jump in and see what we have and see what we think. Counting down then, we start with number 10. This is Showtime, and here's what's coming next. William Hurt and Kathleen Turner star in Body Heat. When the temperature rises, the suspense begins. It is the most important secret of this century, and to this man, keeping the secret is worth anybody's life. Marlon Brando and George C. Scott star in The Formula. Ladies and gentlemen, Showtime presents two heavyweight bouts featuring in the red corner a formidable fist fighter, Clint Eastwood, contesting brawlers and bikers to win this lovely lady. Coached by Clyde, gets this no holds barred non-stop knockabout any which way you can. And in the blue corner, about between two old favorites, action and romance. Leon Isaac Kennedy takes it on the chin from Jane Kennedy. Muhammad Ali co-stars in Body and Soul, the story of an underdog's fight to the top. To your corners, please, for a night of champions, Friday, October 22nd on Showtime. Give me a drink! You loved him once when he was mad as hell. You loved him twice when he was too real. And again when he was uncensored. And now Gallagher is back with an all new unpredictable production. I don't know what I'm doing. He'll tap his way into your heart when he's totally new. On November 2nd at 7.30 p.m., 6.30 Central, Showtime wants you to cast your ballot for the movie you want to see at 8 p.m. Choose from these great features. Paternity. So fine. Ghost story. Or stir crazy. Burt Reynolds wants to elect someone to have his baby in paternity. Or pick Ryan O'Neill in a cheeky comedy so fine. Choose to be scared out of your wits by ghost story. Or lock up your vote for the zany stir crazy. So vote. Let your voice be heard. Tuesday, November 2nd at 7.30, 6.30 Central. That's when you can talk back to showtime. Some folks call it fighting the system. No help me, God. I'm coming back here and I'm raising a bazooka and I'm going to blow your brains out. Do you hear me? Others aren't so diplomatic, especially when the system is a computer. And to beat it, Alan Arkin and Marriott Hartley battle the bureaucracy, oh. taking on the cops. By accident, I punched a cop in the mouth. By accident, you it, punched a cop in the mouth. I was trying mouth. to hit an orderly. The quacks and the crazies. Because when everything proper fails, it's time to use improper channels. Simply the best choice on TV, HBO. What do you get when you mix a horse with a sense of humor, Bob Goldthwait, who could use a little horse sense. How would you know? And Dabney Coleman, honcho of horse play. Don't expect national velvet. Do expect the ride of your life. Just kidding. Because Bob Goldthwait and Don the Talking Horse, well, they're hot to trot. Premiere Sunday, July 9th on HBO. Oh, 
Hi, I'm Dana Fleming with an HBO Entertainment News feature story on the top picks of this summer's flicks. Summertime is movie time, with tickets practically doubling during June, July, and August. This season should prove to be hotter than ever, with a host of newcomers going head-to-head -head with a slew of big-budgeted sequels. 1989 may well be known as the summer of sequels, and there's a reason behind this tried-and-true trend. Potential summer sales stand at an astounding $800 million. First to hit the theaters, Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade, the third and final installment of the series. This $36 million Spielberg spectacular again headlines Harrison Ford as the famous archaeologist adventurer. We found a great character, Indiana Jones. He's a wonderful character, and uh, people love him, and they want to see more of him in the same leather jacket and fedora hat. That same leather jacket and fedora hat are now housed in the Smithsonian, and Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade is credited as the first film to gross $50 million in just seven days. This time around, the cast includes Sean Connery as Dr. Jones Sr., the only man who can put Indy in his place. Dad? Junior? Don't call me that, please. Connery is no stranger to sequels. He played James Bond seven times. Today, Timothy Dalton is James Bond, and License to Kill is his second shot at the role. In my business, you prepare for the unexpected. License to Kill is Bond's 16th sequel, but the very first without a Fleming title. And in it, Dalton dares to do his own dirty work. If you believe it's me, it's me. If you can see it's me, it's me. <laughs> the audience should just quite simply believe that they're watching James Bond. And while the Bond movies have had the same director for the past five films, the fifth installment of Star Trek took a chance on a novice director, William Shatner. The first four Star Treks tallied up $270 million, and using the same formula, the fifth hopes to reach new heights. We're playing professional people doing a job in a professional kind of way. The opposite of Ghostbusters, you know, that kind of thing. Don't laugh. Ghostbusters holds the title as top-grossing comedy of all time. It made more than $230 million. Now the Ghostbusters are back and ready to nuke the spooks. I always knew that there, were, there was more than one story. Even when writing the first one, I was thinking of, well, if they do this, they could do this, this, and this. And the superstars of the supernatural are so sure the sequel will be a smash, they forfeited upfront fees for a piece of the profits. All agree the secret behind their success is this stuff, Methacel, a biodegradable jelly laced with food coloring. Ghostbusters 2 globs up 100,000 gallons of it. And while the Ghostbusters fight slime, Mel Gibson and Danny Glover reunite to fight crime in Lethal Weapon 2. Yeah, there's a lot of apprehension attached to sequels. Um, notoriously, they die, or they're not as good, or they, you gotta try and pull one out of the hat to sort of live up to it, and you feel pressure from that point of view. But sequels aren't the only summer fair. For months, America has anticipated the arrival of Batman. Rumored costs of $50 million bring the 50-year-old DC comic book character to the cinema. Bill Murray was first choice, but Michael Keaton finally swung into action as the Caped Crusader, despite some heavy criticism from Batman. And I thought, this is too good, I'm gonna bite the bullet here and tough it out and do the movie. Certainly the casting coup of the century is Jack Nicholson as the Joker, whose wisecracks warranted $11 million. Call it Cape Crusader confidence or what, but Gotham City is still standing in a London studio with a May 1990 start date set for the sequel. By the way, Michael Keaton's real name was Michael Douglas, which already belonged to another actor. That actor also has a movie out this season. In Black Rain, Douglas takes to the streets of Tokyo to track down a killer. The film's first half was shot on location, but overseas shooting sent them over budget, so everything, including Japanese cars and street signs, was shipped back to L.A. Still, production costs climbed to $30 million. The Abyss, a sci-fi fantasy based on a short story by director James Cameron, was also plagued with production problems. 40% of the film was shot underwater with cast and crew spending six days a week, 13 hours a day submerged. The Abyss became a budgeting black hole that swallowed up $60 million. Well, there you have it, just some of this summer's stock. On a final note, Studios will spend upwards of $10 million plugging their pictures, hoping for a profit. But remember, just to break even, a movie must make three times its original cost. And these days, that's enough to make anyone sweat. I'm Dana Fleming for HBO Entertainment News Feature Story. It's one of the most extraordinary things I've ever seen. And he's the bravest performer I've ever seen, because I don't know if I could ever do that. You know, he's very funny, and then he's 
He's very sad, and, you know, he brings tears. I mean, as you watch his performance, it touches you. Of course, being a family man myself, couldn't help but relate to, relate it to my own life, my own family. Funny, profound, and unforgettable. Time flies when you're alive. Premier Sunday, July 30th on HBO. It's the cover story of the year, a photographer's dream, a breathtaking look at fashion and the warmth of winter in some of the most exotic tropical locations on this planet. For the first time, Sports Illustrated and HBO take you behind the scenes to meet the models who work from dawn to dusk to outshine the sun. Watch Sports Illustrated, the making of the swimsuit issue, Monday on HBO. Showtime, and you're turning on exclusive movies, series, specials, and Showtime Star Power Weekend with comedy every Friday night, exclusive movies and original shows every Saturday night, and two star studded films every double feature Sunday. That's the Showtime Star Power Weekend. Turn it on, turn it on, turn it on. Showtime! Turn it on, turn it on, turn it Got it all right here on Cinemax.